Hey everyone, um, basically just going to be doing a breakdown of the first two weeks in my album a day project that I've been working on this year. Um, essentially, I've been trying to give myself different themed weeks uh, for what I'll be listening to over the course of the year. Um, obviously, I'm not just restricting myself to an album a day, but I will be listening to a bare minimum of one, um, and I will have a list compiled throughout the year that I'll be either posting in my Discord server um, or otherwise posting on socials. Um, that being said, though, um, my first week was actually being done as a cleanup of things that I was supposed to have gotten to last year. Um, the first album on my list was a local artist, since I actually made the promise to myself to check out local artists and give them more of a chance. Um, it was the album Trustfall by Vince the Messenger. Uh, he's a local hip-hop artist from uh, my area, Prince Edward Island. Would very much recommend. I've always liked his live shows, but actually sitting down and listening to an album was a different story. Uh, really good production from Nemo. Uh, really good delivery on most of the tracks. Uh, none of them really left me wanting for more, although there was still uh, glimpses of greater potential and uh, more uh, artistic development uh, from Vince going forward. Great energy all around. I'd give it an 8 out of 10. Um, second record I had listened to this year was um, from the same uh, person behind the Paranol project. It was uh, Rough and Beautiful Place uh, by My Dream Fever, and Despite the fact that it was from the same artist, it feels like a complete 180 in terms of the uh, tone, I guess, would be the best way to put it. Um, while a lot of uh, the music I had heard from them throughout the year last year felt like it was very much relinquishing themselves into the despair um, that the pandemic and a lot of the shit going on in the world had caused, at least from what I'd been able to glimpse from interviews, um, this is a complete 180. It feels like it's reveling in the hope of a new year, truly um, looking for the potential of what's upon the horizons. Um, the second track, uh, I don't have it on my computer, so I can't pull up the name of it. It was a cute four-minute uh, piano interlude, while the rest of the songs all top around eight minutes in length. Um, definitely the best place to start if you wanted to get an intro to the sound of the album, but overall I feel like it's best to go in blind, front to back. Beautiful experience. Um, you don't even need to be in a specific place for it to have the full effect, like a lot of shoegaze and a lot of um that kind of genre of music uh I, I honestly i was half out of it the first time i listened to it uh but it's grown on me so much since that uh just the hooks that it planted in me uh on the first listen of keep it kept me uh coming back i'd give it a 9.5 on a first listen uh a rating that follows over to the second album or third album sorry uh, from that list, which was By the Time I Get to Phoenix by uh, Injury Reserve. I'm not going to say much on this album since I feel words don't really do it justice. Um, the raw emotion on display from the members of this group uh, and, and the one remaining, I guess, um, really outmatches anything that I would have to say on this record. Um, it is a must listen for anyone who enjoys experimental hip hop, but it has been talked to death as is, so I will leave this relatively short. Um, the next record uh, for January 4th was Standing on the Corner's self titled album. It is a great jazz hop fusion, very, very low key, um, great synergy between the different members of the group as far as the instrumentation goes. They play off each other very well. Um, I can't speak praise of it enough. I would definitely recommend checking it out if jazz is your thing. Um, or if you like hip hop uh, and the spin that it puts on a lot of jazz production. Um, next record, this is the first dud of the year, I'd guess. Um, it was I'll Try Living Like This by Death's Dynamic Shroud. Um, it was my last shot at giving anything Vaporwave related a try. Um, I've picked up some of the classics and a lot of what's been recommended online just through, uh, I guess, os osmosis uh, of being on the internet for long enough. And I've given a few albums prior to this one a try. It's unfortunately just very boring and not very stimulating to me. 
which I understand is kind of the point, but at the same time, I, I very severe ADD, so not gonna hook with me. Uh, I can definitely see glimpses of quality in there. Um, the only reason my rating is a 4 out of 10 and not any higher is because while I acknowledge there is a lot of potential to it, it just made me feel like it wasn't worth finishing. And the first time I felt that was on track five. So when you've got an hour, hour and a bit long project in front of you and you're five tracks in and already feeling uninvested, it doesn't feel fair to call that average to me. Um, so yeah, um, unfortunately not a huge fan. One of the best album arts I've seen though. So that is at least a plus. Um, next for January 6th was Heaven to a Tortured Mind by Eve Tumor. I probably pronounced that wrong. I don't really care, but, uh, they are an incredible artist. Uh, I've been sent singles of theirs for God knows how long. I've heard Kerosene probably a dozen times before I'd actually gotten around to listening to the album, and it was definitely worthwhile. Um, it's a great fusion of some elements of rock, psychedelia, pop, electronica, little bits of hip hop influences in there too, but that could just be me overhearing. Um, can't recommend it enough. I definitely should have gotten around to it sooner as it was uh, out for the entire year of 2021 and a little bit of 2020. Just hadn't gotten to it yet. Glad I did though. Um, and to wrap up the first week, I kind of vibe checked myself with this one. I went for the record Uncut by Table. Um, it is a post-hardcore record, um, leaning into punk and math rock inspired influences. Um, it calls back a lot to Les Savi Fav, another group that I got into last year. Um, but Table, uh, this record specifically, since they don't have much else out at the moment, um, and anything from Le Savi Fav has helped put uh, post-hardcore and genres inspired by it on the map for me. So that was definitely very reassuring. Um, now, for week two, uh, week two was essentially my overdue classics week. It was, how have I not listened to this yet, essentially? Um, and the first album of that week definitely made me uh <laughs> think this was a good idea um a night at the opera by queen i shouldn't need to say anything about this album given the fact that it is just well known throughout history i mean come on it's fucking queen uh flawless transitions incredible pacing beautiful orchestration uh Vocal work is incredible. The swells and the uh, down tempo, or like, well, rather the de escalations and the swells of the uh, momentum of the tracks carries very well. And overall, fucking loved it. I cannot put to words how great this album made me feel. I just had an ear to ear fucking grin on my face the entire time. Fantastic. And that carried over very well to the album for the ninth, Illmatic by Nas. Classic for good reasons. It's been talked to death already. Uh, the flowing is effortless. Nas literally sounds like he was born for this. Um, some of the best beats of the 90s. No disrespect to other artists from the era, though. Um, artists like Big L, Jay-Z, um, uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony. Just There's so much from the 90s that I need to get around to. But it's undoubtedly... Uh, some of the better production from that decade, and that's why it's gone down uh, with such a legacy. Um, for January 10th, I had gotten around to Something Else by Cannonball Adderley, one of, now one of my favorite uh, piano jazz, or piano-driven jazz albums. It would be unfair of me to rule out the remaining uh, instrumentalists on this record, given one of them was Miles Davis, of all fucking people. Um, the only complaint that I'd have with this record, honestly, is that it reminded me of how good Ryo Fukui's version of Autumn Leaves is. Near flawless record, definitely going to give it a listen again. Um, I would give it an 8.5 on a first listen, but I know that is going to go up with time. Um, I think I forgot my rating for Illmatic. It was a 9 if I did. Either way. Um, yeah, something else. It is something else. It's in the title, obviously, but... I can't recommend jazz enough. Jazz is one of those genres that I find very difficult to discuss since it impacts people differently depending on what aspects of it they enjoy a lot. 
But I feel like this kind of synthesizes a lot of that. It, it feels very harmonious. Almost like um, calling back to an Adam Neely vid I saw recently. Um, it's almost like every member of the band is having a conversation with themselves as, as if the recording equipment wasn't there. And this is just something they would do on their own. Uh, it, it, it had that very like extension of the artist feeling to it. And that helped a lot with uh, looping me into uh, a lot of the more... Um, uh, melodic and uh, I guess um, synergistic elements of the album. Sorry, I'm at a loss for words. I'm not very good at rephrasing things in real time. Um, next album, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation of this, but it's uh, Sigur Ross's album Agathis Barian. I'm nowhere near close on that, and I apologize to anyone I offended. Um, this album was a 9 out of 10 on its own. Uh, in my opinion, it's very ethereal and almost heavenly in production. Uh, Stade à la Fjord, I think that was how it was pronounced by the vocalist, um, was one of my favorite tracks on the album. Uh, it was close between that, the title track, and Svefen, the track after the intro. Uh, again, apologies for pronunciations. Uh, it was the perfect record to break in my new open back headphones, honestly, since that extra level of roominess to the music helped add a lot of atmosphere to it and helped make it feel uh, that much more uh, like I was being carried to the clouds. Uh, 9 out of 10, fantastic album. Uh, Here Come the Warm Jets by Brian Eno was my record for January 12th. Um, much like with Queen, it's Brian Eno. Need I say more? Um, he's always been incredible. This album isn't any different. Um, some of my favorite tracks were the closing run of, let me see, oh, God, I'm bad with track names, uh, Dead Finks Don't Talk, some of them are old, and Here Come the Warm Jets, uh, I really like Babies on Fire, uh, On Some Faraway Beach was a very, um, kind of relaxing mix-up compared to the rest of the album, but overall, fantastic, um, I actually checked this one out because of the injury reserve sample of Here Come the Warm Jets. So thank you to that for getting me onto this one. Um, but uh, that being said, having more of Brian Eno's music under my belt definitely helps make the influences that he's carried on projects he's worked on and on people that have been inspired by him uh, a lot more obvious, per se. Uh, not to say that it's a bad thing, but it just goes to show how much of a legacy this man has. For January 13, I gave the Blues Traveler album for a listen. Um, now, I fucking love Blues Traveler. They were an album, uh, a band I grew up with. My dad put me onto them alongside ZZ Top and a lot of other blues rock groups from that era. But they are not an album band. They are a see it live, play their best songs, and kind of forget about them for a couple months style of band. Um, this album dragged a lot. It was much slower pacing than I remember it being when I was younger, uh, which kind of goes to show that nostalgia doesn't always preserve things as we remembered them. But the high moments of the album were like a 9 out of 10, and the low points were like a 4 or a 3, so I'll even out and call it a 6. Uh, very good when it's good. When it's not, I felt like I was going to be lulled to sleep, which was kind of unfortunate but I still feel like the high points of the album make it worthwhile. Um, so I would very much recommend it in that regard. And finally, uh, for yesterday's album of January 14th, uh, this is being recorded on the 15th, obviously, um, I gave Images and Words uh, by Dream Theater a listen. Uh, this is joining the long list of 9 out of 10 plus albums that I've listened to this year. Um, Awake uh, was an album I listened to through an album club I was in, in uh, Zem92's Discord server, if any of you are familiar with speedrunning. Um, he's a pretty chill streamer, check him out. Um, all that to say, his Discord server ran an album club, which ended up uh, kind of diversifying my music that I listened to a lot. I got kind of stuck in a math rock slash hip hop rabbit hole in like 2018, 2019, and this helped open my eyes a bit more to metal, um, some electronic genres, um, and prog as well, which was something I just kind of thought was very full of itself, very pretentious, which is ironic coming from a genre literally named after fractions, 
But you know what? Fuck it. I don't. <laughs> that being said, um, Awake definitely left me curious and wanting for more. Uh, Caught in a Web is an eternal banger. It's a song I come back to all the time. Uh, Six O'Clock as well. Um, and that made me want to listen to more of their music from there. And Images and Words, good lord, did it leave me with a hunger for more. Um, the Another Day felt, felt like an interlude given the length of the rest of the songs, but good lord, was the sax on that track amazing. Um, outside of that, the track that came just before the closer... Uh, ah, fuck, I clicked the artist name, not the album. Uh, Wait for Sleep was great as well. Under a Glass Moon was fantastic. Obviously, Metropolis Part 1, can't recommend enough. The Closer was very great. The only track that kind of dragged for me was uh, Take the Time, and even then, it wasn't very noticeable. It was, oh, this is eight minutes, and not like a, damn, this felt like 15 minutes. Um, but overall, fantastic album. Can't recommend them enough. Um, looking forward for next week as well. Um, my next week, uh, two weeks themes. Uh, next week is the 2010s Revisited uh, with a sneak peek of today, uh, the 15th album being A Moonshaped Pool by Radiohead. And the week following is a Deep Cuts um, albums that either not a lot of people would have gone out of their way to listen to or are just not given the credit they deserve. So hope you guys look forward to that. Um, I'll take any and all feedback on this uh, down below. If any of you have suggestions based on what I feel from these albums um, or if you would have things you would like to see me cover in the future, that would be awesome. Definitely let me know. Um, I apologize for the kind of amateurish one take style, but I just wanted to get this out there really more than anything and see um, how it's received since I have a lot of opinions on music and putting them in a cohesive manner is something I always struggled with. But if it goes well, it goes well. If it doesn't, I'm still going to keep doing it because I just like talking about music. So fuck you. <laughs> Either way, have a good rest of your day, folks. Thank you for watching and uh, enjoy the uh, rest of your weekends.